Our heroes show us the path to our heart's desire. Our role models inspire us to be more like them. And our mentors help to uncover and unleash our true potential. My first hero was Dr. Jane Goodall. And when I was a little girl, I wanted to grow up to be just like her. She was the first female primatologist, and she spent decades living in the African jungle studying the wild chimps of Gombe. I was fascinated by her exotic career. And as a young girl who was madly in love with animals, Dr. Goodall inspired me to pursue my dreams of working with wildlife. And now for a long time, I thought I'd become a primatologist, but somehow I found my way to penguins instead. So for nine years, I took care of the penguins at the New England Aquarium in Boston, and then 10 years ago, I began traveling the world as the penguin lady, teaching kids and adults all about these fascinating birds. And over the last 20 years, I've had the chance to do some pretty cool stuff, stuff I could never have imagined I'd be doing back when I was your age in junior high school. I have written an award-winning book about penguins, I wrote and narrated a video about penguin conservation for TED-Ed. I've spoken to hundreds of thousands of people and at four TEDx conferences as of today. I have done a lot of TV and radio, and I've lectured on ships traveling to Antarctica and the Galapagos Islands. But I would not have achieved any of those things, oh, I had one, any of those things were it not for these people. They have been some of my most influential heroes, role models, and mentors. But before I tell you how each of them has changed my life, I think it's important for you to understand a little bit about who I was before I met them. Now, I'm often asked to speak about my professional journey, the steps I took to get from point A to point B, but there is an interior journey behind that story that I've really never spoken about publicly before. And a lot of it is pretty private and personal and a little scary for me to talk about here, but I wanted to pull back the curtain and share it with you today in hopes that it might encourage some of you sitting here who maybe feel the way that I did when I was your age. So throughout my entire childhood, I was extremely shy and awkward and insecure. I had zero self-esteem, no self-confidence, and I truly hated myself. I also hated school because I had very few friends there and I was sometimes bullied. And I just wanted to feel normal and to be liked and accepted by my classmates. But that didn't happen, probably because I didn't like or accept myself. And there's a number of reasons why I think I might have felt this way. I had to wear these horrible corrective saddle shoes uh, because I had one leg that was slightly shorter than the other. And I had very stylish blue cat eye glasses. <laughs> and for a while, I even had to wear an eye patch for a lazy eye. I was so scrawny that doctors had to put me on diets to gain weight. I also was born missing a kidney. And I had other birth defects that required several surgeries throughout my childhood. And this, in particular, made me feel like a freak because I thought I was the only person on Earth with these weird abnormalities. And then finally, I also had ADD, undiagnosed. I only found out 10 years ago that I had it, but I had attention deficit disorder and most likely clinical depression as well, which also wasn't diagnosed. Um, but these things also just sort of added to my discomfort around people. And I think that this is part of why I was always drawn to animals so much. I loved and connected with them because I was so uncomfortable around people. Because animals don't judge you. And they offer unconditional love and acceptance. So when I first learned about endangered species, I was truly devastated to know that there were animals being wiped off the face of the earth forever. And I desperately wanted to do something to save them. But I couldn't imagine what one person could possibly do to make a difference. But I always had this feeling deep down inside that I was put here on earth to help animals somehow. I wasn't sure how, but that feeling would follow me into adulthood. But before I could help animals, I had to help myself. And that didn't happen until I met Jane O'Hara. 
in my 20s. I was roommates with Jane and another friend. Now, before I continue, I should tell you that Jane has given me permission to share this story. So Jane and this other friend were both alcoholics. And Jane actually served as a very important role model for me. Not for being an alcoholic, but once she got sober and began going to AA and Al-Anon meetings. And AA is for a support group for people who are alcoholics. Al-Anon and Alateen is for people who care about them and are affected by their drinking, which I was. So over time, I saw Jane changing and growing and becoming so much happier and everything in her life was just going so much better. And I wanted some of that. So when she asked if I'd like to go to an Al-Anon meeting with her one day, I jumped at the chance. And that was the single best decision I have ever made. In those rooms, I began to grow in self-understanding and self-confidence, and I eventually came to love and accept myself, warts and all. I learned to let go of the negative thinking, the constant self-doubt, and that internal critic that had always plagued me. Now, we all have that negative critic, critic up here, by the way, and I really, really hate to tell you this, it never goes away completely, but you can learn how to quiet it and even how to replace it with more positive self-talk. So once I began, I began to have this confidence, I was able to pursue my dream of saving a species. Once I had that confidence to return to college to pursue a degree in animal science, and that is where what happened was I actually began to get straight A's for the first time in my life. And for someone with ADD, this is actually a bit of an achievement. And so I was really proud and excited to be invited to join the International Honor Society Phi Theta Kappa. And that's where I met Dick and Sandy Glessner, who were the chapter advisors. This amazing couple soon became life-changing mentors. And I know for a fact, if I had not met them, I would not be standing here today speaking to you. The Glessners, it all began when they invited me to run for chapter president. And I thought they had completely lost their minds because I'd never been part of any organization, let alone run one. And so at first I said, yeah, no thanks, you've got the wrong person. But the Glessners persisted because they saw something in me that I had no idea was even there. They saw leadership potential. They truly believed in me, and they assured me I had what it took to do this. So I was still completely skeptical and scared to death because it would be my first leadership role, and it would require a lot of public speaking, and I'd always had a paralyzing fear of speaking in public. But I had learned in Al-Anon that the greatest growth comes from facing our greatest fears. And the really, really good stuff starts to happen once we step outside of our comfort zone and leap into the unknown. So I leapt. And the Glessners caught me whenever I faltered, which I did a number of times. But they were always there to support me, guide me, encourage me, and to help me grow. By teaching me how to become a confident public speaker and an effective leader, I developed the skills I needed to get the job I really wanted at the New England Aquarium working with penguins because that job required speaking to thousands of people every day and managing a team, a large team of volunteers. So a few years after I began working at the New England Aquarium, a ship named the Treasure sank off the coast of South Africa. The oil that spilled from that ship threatened to kill nearly half of the entire world population of African penguins, which were a threatened species. The local rescue center put out a call for help, and two days later, I was on a plane headed for Cape Town with seven other penguin experts. This was it. The moment I had dreamed of for my entire life. I was finally going to have the opportunity to do something tangible to help save a species. After we landed in Cape Town, we were brought to a massive warehouse that was filled to bursting with nearly 20,000 penguins that were soaked with oil. 
The scene inside of that building was devastating. And the penguins were clearly traumatized. But we didn't have time to wallow in sadness. Jay Holcomb, who was the director of International Bird Rescue, greeted us and immediately put us to work feeding penguins. This remarkable man soon became my hero, my role model, and my mentor, all rolled up into one. Jay was there to direct the rehabilitation management team, of which I was a member. On our first night there, he put two of us in charge of running room two. Room two had more than 4,000 oiled penguins in it. And it had hundreds of inexperienced volunteers that we would have to train and supervise. This was the most terrifying moment of my entire life. I remember thinking, there's no way I can do this. This was the largest animal rescue that had ever been attempted. And we all knew that just six years earlier, half as many penguins had been rescued from another oil spill and half of them had died. So we didn't even know if what we were attempting to do was humanly possible. But Jay made us believe it was possible. He made us believe in ourselves. And he made us believe we could and we would save these birds. That is what great leaders do. They inspire confidence. Failure was never an option. Every minute of that rescue was stressful and exhausting and grueling beyond description. But Jay never let any one of us give in or give up. And because he believed in my abilities way more than I even did, I discovered in that, Cape, that warehouse in Cape Town that I was capable of handling so much more than I had ever dreamed possible. In the end, we saved 91% of those 20,000 oiled penguins, which is miraculous. The treasure rescue still stands as the largest and most successful animal rescue in history. And being a part of it was truly the greatest privilege of my life. I still remember sitting on the plane, heading back to Boston, thinking, if I die today, it will be OK. Because I feel as though I have just fulfilled my destiny. Jay Holcomb, Jane Goodall, the Glessners, and Jane O'Hara all inspired me and guided me and helped me achieve my lifelong dream of saving a species. What are your dreams? What do you dream of doing or being? Who inspires you? I urge you all to seek out heroes, role models, and mentors who can help you become the person you are destined to be, who can help move you one step closer to your dreams. You all have the potential within you to achieve amazing things. But we all need other people to help us realize our greatest potential. So I want you to promise me this. The next time someone says to you that they see something special in you or that they have faith in your abilities, I want you to believe them. Every person in this room can have or be a hero, a role model, and a mentor. It doesn't matter how old or how young you are. You might even be a hero to someone much older than yourself. And if you've ever had a mentor who has made a difference in your life, I invite you to pay it forward today by becoming a mentor. Helping another person realize their true potential is profoundly rewarding. So make a difference in someone else's life. Be inspired by someone else's life. I have always been and always will be deeply inspired by Dr. Jane Goodall's life. She is still my number one hero. At the age of 80, this amazing woman still travels the world more than 300 days every year, speaking to students and global leaders alike, 
urging them all to help her save the chimps and protect the environment. Like Jay Holcomb, she will never give in and never give up. Jane Goodall is living proof that one person can make a tremendous difference in this world. And I still want to be just like her when I grow up. Thank you. Thank you.